So this statement is now all done. Put that in green. We could put a big tick now on this statement so we know it's reconciled. Let's go to page two. Okay, so this is statement number 54 and the process literally starts all over again. So let's click on reconcile, make sure the correct bank is highlighted. So this statement reference is statement 54. The end imbalance this time, let's have a look, is minus 15873. So that's the balance at the end of the statement. 15873. And once again, I'm going to put the 31st of May. We could put in the 30th of May, the day at the bottom of the statement, but I just like to put the end of the period that we're working towards. Click OK. So our last reconcile balance is now minus 162473 which is the balance at the bottom of our last statement. Hopefully this is starting to make a bit more sense now. And this should match our opening balance on our next statement. Okay, which it does. This is 167473, about 50 pounds has gone out of the bank. So it should be 162473, which is right. Okay, so I'd normally put a tick next to that open balance so I know it's right. Let's go through these transactions again see what we have on stage. We have £50 out, a card payment to BP so it looks like someone's filled up with fuel. No, £100 up here. Nothing to match that, that needs to go on. £60 Premier in. No, that's not up there. Ah, £100. 20 for the 5th, a check. 3576. Okay, so we're looking at the reference here. We have 100 pounds for wages 003576. So let's double click on that, bring that down, and highlight that. Very good. 22nd of the 5th, 3577 seven for 100 pounds. 3577 seven legal fees, 100 pounds, yeah. There we go. I've got two on there. We're doing well. Another check three five seven eight for twelve hundred pounds. No, nothing. There's only one tra transaction left now. That's five hundred five oh seven paid in a hundred pounds, which is this next one five hundred five oh seven hundred pounds. So let's double click on that. Put that in green. Okay, and it's obvious that these two transactions are not on stage. There's nothing else to bring down on the statement. Okay, so once again, just like last time, let's start from the top and put these transactions one, two, three, four, five onto Sage. So the sixth thing for the fifth, a car payment to BP. Now you should have receipts from your manager or whoever has the current account card to match these payments payments going out of the bank um, it's just good accounting practice to keep these receipts you might want to staple them to this statement or staple them to the statement that they reflect to or refer to this is 16th for the 5th ok let's save this here are three that we've matched let's click save don't want to reconcile yet until we've hit zero so we've still got one minus one five six six to go. So payment. The date is the sixteenth for the fifth. Sixteen oh five twenty thirteen. So we might want to put CP or something in there, card payment or DC debit card payment. Whatever you think's best. The nominal code, it was BP. It's this, let's go down to the vehicle codes. 7400 has put under traveling. Put fuel. Put 
put 50 in, obviously there's that and fuel, click calculate net. We'll have a car payment for Premier in 60. 18 for the fifth. 18 for the fifth. Hotels. Hotel. Right, that's on there. Let's click save. Very good. So those two are on Sage, we haven't reconciled them yet, but they're on Sage. We have this check now, 3578 for 1200 pounds. Now what you have to do with checks, if you haven't already posted them to Sage, is to get the check stubs and hopefully in the pay to on the check stubs you'll have more information who the payment was to or what it was for. So it's 1200 pounds, let's just say we looked in the check stubs and it was casual labour. You know, someone came in for, a, you know, three or four weeks and did some manual labour for us or something. Um, 1,200 pounds. So that's a 24 for the fifth. 24 for the fifth. 1,200 pounds. So payment, 24 for the fifth. Oh, bank account, 1,200. Make sure that when you're putting these tr transactions on Sage that they're going in and out to the right bank account that you're reconciling. 24 for the fifth, otherwise you have to go into the corrections area. So reference 00 3578, that's the check reference. Um, casual wages at the top here, 7005. So you can just put wages laborer or something like that. It was twelve hundred pounds, no VAT T nine. Click save. Okay. So those three transactions are now on Sage and we have two backs payments from customers. Two thousand five hundred and three seven six. And they're the same customers as the statement before. 28 for the 5th and the 30th for the 5th. So, Bronson, that was the first one. 25th for the 5th, I believe they were. Let's have a look. 25th or 28th for the 5th. 28th for the 5th for 2,500 which is this invoice outstanding on their account and let's put backs once again in there there's the reference then this last statement is Johnson Design by backs 376 so Johnson Design 30th of the 5th which is the date there Three seven six pay in full banks. Yes, that's all posted now. Let's click the reconcile button and bring up our saved reconciliation. So once again let's start from the top with a car payment to BP for fifty, which is there, fuel fifty, the dates match as well. Put that in green. Car payment 60 for hotel, 60 hotel, Premier Inn. That one is matched. And on the statement, 24th the 5th, 3578. That's the check reference, 3578, 1200 pounds. Double click, it's brought down onto the statement. We're flying through these now. Bronson's, 2500 pounds. There we go. And then Johnson Design 376 backs. There we go. Color that in red. In green, sorry. So our closing balance minus 15873. 
Our balance here is minus 15873. The statement balance, the match balance, and this difference is zero. And that's what we want to see. So the other statement reconciled. Um, you can see once you get into the, the hang of doing these, they speed up. You can get quite quick doing these reconciliations. So once we're happy and that says zero, click reconcile. Once again, it'll take some time to load. There we go. So that's two or three statements done, and let's do the last one.